So this is Zeratan, uh, which is a sequencer patch that I developed with the idea <coughs> that I developed with the idea of wanting to have an interface that was easy to use but generated complex sequences. So the way that this works is that the top row indicates what gates are active <clears throat> and each of the subsequent rows is gated by the row above it uh, <clears throat> which in turn uh, when those steps are high they activate these uh, note modifiers or offset modifiers and the offset modifiers cumulate, so they add together. Um, and the effect is that as it moves through these different sequencer lanes at different speeds, uh, the sequence becomes more complex, but also repeats. I wanted something that was consistent. Um, and so you can change these modifiers. You can also change the gate chance, which is the likelihood that that top row's input produces a gate. I'm going to bring the sequence back up. And I should say that my patch is pretty simple. The output of the sequencer is going into a, a Platts clone, Plates clone, um, and then that's going into a Beads to add some reverb. Uh, and the envelope output is going to the level input of the Plates. So it's controlling both the, the pitch and the uh, Amplitude. I'm just going to lower this a little bit. Um, so there are the note modifiers. You input the basic sequence up here. You have five notes. It's a five note sequencer. Uh, but with all the modifiers, it produces a lot more than five notes. Um, and then you can choose different playback styles. So there's one called Grid. way that the grid option works is that the number of steps in a sequencer that are active or the the total number of sequencers that are active on that step uh, will choose which of the five notes is played as the baseline and then all the modifiers will be added to it uh, there's also a random option which is a little more generative in nature. Obviously, you don't get the same repeating sequences element. Uh, but it, it can be more spontaneous because of that. Um, and then the one we were hearing is called order, which just plays the, the notes back in the order that they appear out of these five notes. Um, so it'll play it as a sequence, but again, the modifiers all get applied, that sort of thing. 
Below that is a quantizer, so you can change what key it, it produces notes in. Let's change it to a minor for a second. I may keep it on that. I, I like the sound of the minor key. Um, there's a tap tempo. It accepts MIDI clock and clock via CV, but you can tap in a tempo so we can have it a lot slower too. There's a gate length control. If you're using the gate output, you can control how long the gates are. Uh, and then this button is interesting because it lets you choose between two different clocking methods. So when the button is off, it's using the gate method. And what that means is that uh, these rows won't be gated by the row above them until they have uh, a rising signal. So it'll treat successive steps as though they are all one gate. And uh, basically the effect is that changes occur more slowly. And I should point out that if you remove all the steps from any one of these rows, then the rows below it won't advance, which might be useful if you want to sort of pause it at, at some condition. Um, but it's good to know because, you know, if you remove all of those steps, then... Uh, <laughs> steps then it won't advance. Um, option is turned on, instead of each one of these rising points in the sequence gating a uh, row below it, uh, when the gates are high on the row above the, the row you're looking at, the clock will pass. So it's a little bit different and it'll move much more quickly through the different options there. Uh, one other thing that I should point out before I get to this next control is that you can change the length of the sequences. Oopsie daisy. You can change the length of the sequences by holding down on them any one of the steps for one second. So you can add, uh, you know, some sort of poly... Uh, metric element or polyrhythmic element. I get those two confused and I'm doing this live. Uh, so I'm not going to look it up. But that gives you an option to create uh, even more complex interplays between the, the different modifiers. Uh, but if you're like me, well, one thing you can do is just always hold down the last step to, to return it to an eight step sequence. Um, but if you press this button, then all of the sequences will be returned to, to eight steps, the reset length button. Um, 
And then finally, there's an envelope. Uh, originally, this patch had a demo voice and I removed it. It wasn't special. Uh, I removed it to save CPU, but I kept the envelope because I thought that was maybe a nice utility. And I like using it. Um, so the envelope is tied to the tempo of the patch. Uh, and we have three controls for it. Uh, let me turn. There's a time control or an envelope length control so I can make the envelope longer. There's a shape control. At zero, it's a decay envelope. As you move above zero, it takes on an attack element. And as you move below zero, there's a hold stage before the decay. You also have the option to make the envelope linear. That's the patch. Again, the whole idea is that you can use it to sort of quickly generate complex uh, sounds, so or, or sequences. So you know, just press buttons, and it changes.